U.S. Uh, Immigration and Customs Enforcement, ICE, has only existed since 2003. In 15 short years, the agency has racked up an appalling and infamous record of abuses while failing to make this country any safer. On paper, ICE was created to prevent acts of terror. In practice, it has focused mainly on the detention and removal of individual immigrants and done so in an abusive and counterproductive manner. Under this president, ICE has dropped even the pretense of targeting individuals who have committed serious felonies. Instead, opaquely choosing its enforcement targets and, in effect, terrorizing entire communities. ICE has done so through a pattern of abuses of power, undermining the rule of law, and failing to protect those under its jurisdiction. ICE agents have posed as police officers, threatening the critical public safety link between local police and immigrant communities. It has targeted immigrant enforcement against political activists. It has wrongly detained hundreds and hundreds of American citizens, some of whom spent years in detention due to ICE's negligence. We have seen a serious practice of sexual abuse in ICE's detention facilities. From 2013 to 2017, ICE received more than 1,300 complaints of sexual abuse by people it detained, a figure advocates contend is likely significantly underreported. Although ICE itself has, since 2014, been required by law to annually report to the public all aggregated sexual abuse and assault data, it has never done so. Reporting by The Intercept found that of 1,224 allegations of abuse reported to the Department of Homeland Security, Officer of the Inspector General from 2010 to 2017, just 43 were actually investigated. When faced with evidence of the injustices and abuses perpetrated by ICE, the President and his supporters have engaged in racist and alarmist demagoguery. First, they insist that we must accept these abuses if we wish to be safe. That idea is absurd, and the legislation that this resolution calls on Congress to pass demonstrates that reform does not undermine security. H.R. 6361, the Establishing a Humane Immigration Enforcement System Act, does not mean open borders nor does it mean an end to all immigration enforcement. What it would mean is the creation of a task force to review the truly essential functions currently under jurisdiction of ICE and transfer them to other federal agencies while eliminating those that fail to serve a public safety or national security purpose. The President's supporters also point to the fact that many of these abuses began under the Bush and Obama administrations, as if that were exculpatory, rather than an even more damning indictment of ICE as an institution. By separating interior immigration enforcement from other law enforcement or national security concerns, it is no surprise that ICE has interpreted its mandate in the cynical and counterproductive way that it has. And shielded from public oversight and accountability, it is no surprise that it has done so in abusive ways. 
This larger point brings me to why I think this resolution is so important and why hashtag abolish ICE has resonated so profoundly with so many people. It has resonated because of all of the specific reasons we've discussed, because of the cruelty and injustice we've seen in immigration enforcement over the past two years and over the past decade or so. It has also resonated because at its core, it represents a willingness to reshape our institutions, to rectify injustice, and chart a course to a more humane place. This conversation is similar in many ways to the discussion of closing Rikers here in New York City. Yes, there are practical and political challenges. Yes, transforming institutions is complicated work, but it must be done. We must do it. And that is what Abolish ICE represents. It is a rejoinder to the unimaginative pedantry of those who defend the status quo. It means starting with the goal of justice and designing institutions to achieve it rather than starting with existing institutions and allowing them to limit our conceptions of justice. By passing this resolution, the New York City Council can stand up for our immigrant neighbors and just as importantly, can stand up for the principle of confronting injustice no matter what. And so I thank my colleagues for their consideration and of course, I want to thank my legislative director, Sean Fitzpatrick, who was the first to see the necessity of H.R. 6361 and this resolution. Thank you, Speaker Johnson. Thank you, Chair Menchaca. Thank you, Councilmember Rosenthal, uh, for, your, for your commitment and looking forward to